Tina Koto Katoa, Talo Falava. Good afternoon. My name is Alexia Hubertidu, and I'm the founder and CEO of Girlboss New Zealand. What is Girlboss? Girlboss is a by youth, for you, social enterprise that was started to encourage young women into STEM fields so that they can become the change makers of the future and today. What keeps me up at night? What are my worries? I've grown up in a world where headlines like these have prevailed on my social media feeds. Women dropping out. The gender pay gap grows. Robots stealing jobs. Looking behind the headlines, I found that the statistics backed up my fears. New Zealand tech businesses are desperate for more employees. In fact, so much so that they've said that their biggest growth, uh, growth challenge is lack of employees for their businesses. On the other hand, we're seeing that their graduate rates for computer science and software engineers have dropped 42% from 2005 to 2010. New Zealand women are the solution to this problem. If we can target them and support them, then they can help our economy thrive. Young, young children, young girls, are just as likely to be interested in tech as their male counterparts. So how come they go from this to this? <coughs> what causes this disparity? What causes this gap? Well, the research shows that there are three key factors which are holding women back in STEM. The first key factor is lack of representation. You, we cannot be what we cannot see. Recently, I'm going to tell you a story. Recently, I was at a tech entrepreneurship challenge. And, what, um, and one of the speakers showed us this picture to inspire the audience to go into technology. This is a picture of the founders of PayPal. Now, I'm sorry, but I just cannot see myself in this picture. When these men are held up as role models, is it any wonder that young women, and in particular, Māori and Pacifica young women, are not going into these fields? The second factor is a lack of community. When I was 14, I went to a coding event, and when I found out that we had to code Minecraft, I decided to leave. Many tech businesses have a bro culture. Pretzels, uh, pretzels, video games, Star Wars. Here are some photos from a local tech company that have let me use them for this, pre for this presentation. I don't need to drink beers with the boys, take a slide to my office, or have my formal job title be coding ninja or warlock wizard. <laughs> when we have a culture like that, we get staff photos that look like this. And if we don't make a change, this will continue to be the level of diversity we see in our workplaces. At 15, I went to a woman in tech event at Venn's Auckland offices. This was the first time I'd ever met a woman software engineer. For the first time, after years of programmers and Star Wars references, I finally found a sense of community. The third factor causing the disparity in STEM is misconceptions of difficulty. Media hype, which glorifies coding heroes such as Bill Gates, means that many young women do not have the confidence to go into these fields. In my experience, coding isn't that hard, but there's some who ben benefit from us believing this misconception. So to sum it up, lack of representation, misconceptions of difficulty, lack of community, is it any wonder that young women aren't going into these fields? You may be thinking, who is this young woman? And what is she doing talking to some of these STEM leaders about what needs to change? And I've been asking myself the same thing. 
but all I know is that this is an issue that I care de deeply about, an issue where I think I can make a difference. Given, given the opportunity, I know that this is an area where we can create great change. So how does Girlboss make a difference? Girlboss strategy brings together the networking power of the entrepreneur and the increasingly important work of the scientist. This is science. We trial a range, we trial a range of solutions. We analyze, we, an, we collect data via testimonials, surveys. <coughs> we analyze the results and we repeat what works. Our second, our second strategy is via strategic partnerships. Girlboss has partnerships with Xero, Orion Health, um, AUT, and KPMG. These organizations support our work because they know that if we do not address this problem, who will code our programs? Who will engineer our designs? And who will solve our scientific problems? Last year, Zero was when Zero was searching for software engineers for their New Zealand offices, they drew a blank. Out of their 200 hires last year, 70 had to be sourced from overseas. Zero are one of our biggest supporters because they know that a partnership with, that we can help them solve this problem. Earlier this year, we ran two conferences. This is our data that proves that we are on the right track and proves that Girlboss has captured the Zeke guys. 380 attendees, 27 speakers, including Michelle Dickinson and Anna Curzon, and $16,000 in sponsorship. This is proof that this is evidence that we are on the right track. Girlboss has been featured in all the media shown above. This provides legitimacy and attracts agencies and members who are willing to get involved. Does Girlboss improve the social well-being of New Zealand? When we ask this question, what do we mean? Isn't New Zealand just a collection of people? And if so, if so, then yes, Girlboss is making a difference. Girlboss is making a difference in the lives of Matre, is making the difference in the life of 15-year-old Matre Jane who interviews STEM leaders such as Michelle Dickinson and Victoria Metcliffe for our Girlboss newsletter. Girlboss is making a difference in the life of Molly, who at 14 went to our conference and is taking it next year, uh, is taking digital technology next year. Girlboss is making a difference in, in the life of 17-year-old Maisie Bentley, who is leading our our, our school rollout in Wellington next year. In the space of eight months, Girlboss has managed to, to manage to have a network of 1,000 members. How do we do this? We understand our target market because we are our target market. He are Time Nui, he tangata. He tangata, he tangata. What is the most important thing? It is people, it is people, it is people. But the thing that drives our overall approach in the country has talent. got to be to get right <clears throat> the idea of a country where talent wants to live. And that, if I had a mission statement for New Zealand, it would be just that, a place where talent can thrive. Because if we ensure that we get that right, the creative people want to live here, work here, and export their capability to the world. Sir Paul Culligan recognised that science and technology will be the tools that will encourage us to thrive. I agree. To, New Zealand was the first country, first country to give women the vote, and it will be the first country to close the gender pay gap in STEM. Together, men and women, we will work together to create a better New Zealand for us all. Thank you.
Uh, thanks, Alexia. Why do you think women in this day and age, when they head practically every institution you can think of, why do you think they still need extra help? Um, because the data has shown that women are underrepresented in these fields. But why are they? Um, so I think that the three major reasons they're underrepresented in this field is because of lack of representation. Um, that doesn't make sense to me. Okay. They're underrepresented because of lack of representation. Yes. Okay, so they struggle to go into fields when they cannot see themselves and not meet other women that look like themselves in those fields. It's hard to aspire to something when you cannot see someone like yourself in those fields. And when will you know when your work is done? I will know my work is done when there's 50% of STEM employees are women. Thank you.